So Cam, I'm pretty educated on this. So what, what is somebody at home? Can you maybe tell us how they would pick a fan for their application? Absolutely. The biggest thing is really just trying to get at least 75% coverage of that radiator core or more. What are some things you're on a budget, what you could do? I, I know some people might not be able to afford the controller. Do you offer some, like, you know, the relays or? So we offer a, a traditional relay kit. You can use a manual switch. Um, we offer 180 and 190. Hey, it's Paul at Old Anvil Speed Shop and we're working on our international truck again. Today we're gonna to look at how we're gonna keep this thing cool. Uh, we already have a Griffin radiator and we need to get some airflow through this thing. It's gonna run pretty hot with this Whipple supercharger on it, making about 900 horsepower. So we have a special guest here today with us. Cam is here from Durali Performance. Uh, he helped us get our fans all set up on this truck. We're gonna talk about some of the great features of what we did here. We have the Whipple and a Griffin radiator. Uh, we're gonna be producing a tremendous amount of heat, so we need a lot of CFMs. And maybe tell us a little why, why we chose this particular fan. So the big thing is on a nice big radiator like this, you have enough room where you can put two fans. So if we can fit two of our 12 inch fans, like our 16924 that you're using, mm -hmm. you're gonna have about 2000 CFM out of each fan. Uh, the big thing is that fan itself is proprietary to us through Spall, so it's high quality, you can rely on it. Oh, very nice. And then the beauty is we actually have a true uh, CFM rating, which shows how strong the fan is. Usually it's about one amp for 100 CFM. So you don't have a company telling you it's 10 amps, but you get 3,000 CFM. Oh, that's an interesting number to know, the, the one amp per, what is it, one amp per? One amp for 100, 100 CFM. CFM. Oh, that's, that's pretty neat to know. Uh, that helps us on how we're gonna wire this thing up. Right, it's picking out the right gauge and setting it up appropriately. Mm -hmm. And that makes all the difference. With the setup we have, we're running a Holly ECU. We can control the fans with the ECU. So what, what do you think on that? So we have, we have two fans and are these single speed or do, double speed? I know you have some double speed fans as well. We do. So this particular unit is gonna be a single speed, which makes it a lot easier to operate. Okay. Um, generally we do offer fan controllers, but where you're running a Holly unit, best way is to just program it and let that operate the fans with a basic relay system. Gotcha. So yeah, so we'll probably control one fan and have it turn on like 165 degrees um, and, and then shut off at 160. And then the second one would kick in at like 185 and then kick off at 180. Um, that way it's, it's, you don't hear fans running all the time, but I don't think I usually hear your fans too much. No, for the most part, they are pretty quiet. And obviously with the impressive engine like this, you want to be able to sit there and listen to that and not oh, yeah. hear a fan humming. <laughs> but no, the uh, the angle that we put on the blades, we try and keep it very minimal, but where it still stays effective because no one wants to sit and listen to a fan all day. Uh, you mentioned your controllers. What, uh, what options would I have with that? So the most popular one that we have is our pulse width modulated controller. Uh, instead of just turning off and on like a relay setup would, it'll vary the speed. So the fan might only run 30%, 40, 50%. It only runs as much as it needs to maintain a set temperature. Okay. So that, that would probably work well like with the, we have a carbureted application? Absolutely. Yeah, anything that doesn't have all the fancy electronics that some of the, the more impressive builds have. Mm -hmm. uh, even if they just want to keep it more traditional, um, it's really popular on a lot of like parade type vehicles because where you're limiting the sound of the fan, but you also limit the amp draw. So you're not running full tilt with something like this. It would be 50 amps if it was going both fans. Gotcha. So you keep it much more contained. It ramps the fan up? Yes. Like, correct? Yeah, true soft start, one to 100%. So it makes it very simple, easy. It's all self-contained, but it, it's a very modernized unit for any traditional application like this. Okay. And that works on either single speed or the double speed? Either one. Okay. Well, that's really neat. Um, it just gives us some ideas for some of our other builds. So looking at this radiator, it's a Griffin radiator, and we're about 28 inches overall. 
It has a 23 inch wide core and it's uh, kind of the standard 16 inch tall. So let's go over and maybe we'll take a look at the, the, the fan that we used. The uh, one nice thing about Durali stuff is that they have, they have lots of information both in their, in their catalog and in, on their boxes that they, they give you the CFM, the amp draw, and then we have all the outside dimensions of it, which uh, for me in designing this stuff works really well. So if we're, uh, we're looking, the one we used, 16924, um, it has a, it's a 12 inch fan, 13 inch width, 13 inch height, and a three and a half inch depth with a minimum depth of two and three eighths. So that tells us what size we can fit on this radiator, which we figured out we can run two of them. And that gives, so that'll give us 4,000 CFM flow on this thing, which is... Tons of airflow. Yeah, we get a lot of airflow. Uh, so let's, let's take this thing out and look at it. Absolutely. All our stuff comes packaged really nice. We've never had any damage. Yeah, so the, uh, I mean, you can tell me a little bit more about that. I think that's the backside. No. Yes, yeah, so this is gonna be our backside right here. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's fall stamped right on the housing and on the blade. Mm -hmm. But while we're looking at the blade, like I mentioned that minimal angle to get enough airflow out of it, but we put a little trailing edge, helps keep it a little bit quieter. Ah. Uh, if possible, there's always the curve blade option as well. But this is gonna be one of the best fans that we offer just because of that CFM performance that you're getting out of it. Okay, so which one would be quieter? Technically, the curve blade is gonna be slightly quieter, but that's more of a in-house deal. So we make our own motor for it, and it's a little different internals. Mm -hmm. uh, about the same amp draw, the same airflow, but this, the robustness of the unit, it just has a, a very strong motor. Uh, it's sealed, so it's waterproof, dirt-proof. It's almost indestructible. Okay, that's what sets you all apart. So to mount this, we usually we usually build our shroud so that the fan goes inside of the shroud. We don't like to see them just hanging out on the outside because you've got we got a nice classic car and then there's there's the plastic part. So right, nothing against your fans, but plastic we we don't necessarily want to see the electric fans. Um, so we we put them inside of the housing. Plus, it kind of creates a vacuum, I, I believe. That, it does to draw through because these are this is. This can be used as a puller or a pusher though, right? It can, so okay. that's the, the nice part. It's very versatile, you can use it however you need, but you're right, when it's in a shroud, you get a bit more vacuum where you can cool from the entire radiator, not just what's right in front of that. Gotcha. Um, so this, so we, 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 we've mounted this one off of these, these four holes and mounted directly into it. Um, and I look, it looks like this is, is this for a gasket? No, that's just a, a relief ring that we have in there from the injection molding. Okay. Uh, we did initially try doing a gasket for the pusher applications, but we found that it's better to just use uh, like a rubber isolator foot. It steps it off just enough to where you're not having the fan rubbing on the core and it makes it last a little bit longer. Gotcha. Yeah, this has a nice robust frame to it on this one. Yeah. So what, what's some of these other mounts? I'm not even really familiar with those. So we've had a few people in the past before where they like the idea of using a, almost a, a prefix screw where you have your shroud set and you just drop the fan in, give it a little turn, and you can lock it down into that ear. Oh man, that actually would work really well in some of our really tight stuff like that. No, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then these are, what, what's, which ones are these for? There's also a set of uh, like stepped out feet that we use for Generally a pusher application uh, where it'll, same thing, kind of a bit more rigidly hold the fan off. But if you, you know, you want a, a different style of mounting, it gives you a few different options. Okay, very interesting. And we try and carry that through with all of our fans. I mean, if you look at the whole lineup, there's a good variety of different ways that you can mount them and use them. Mm -hmm. One thing I like is this right here, that the, the wiring actually comes through and you have it where we can put it inside of the shroud and tuck it through and then come back out in our grommet or our plugs. It keeps that clean appearance that yes. you mentioned. Yeah, this is very nice. Yeah, what a great looking piece. 
All right, so uh, so Cam, I'm I'm pretty educated on this. So what what is somebody at home? What what the can you maybe tell us and show us how they would pick a, a fan for their application? Absolutely. So like I mentioned, we have about 40 or so different shroud sizes, which we have all outlined here in the catalog. Um, the biggest thing is really just trying to get at least 75% coverage of that radiator core or more. Okay. Uh, we've worked with Griffin and Be Cool, Champion, all those guys to try and figure out the most popular core sizes and just get offerings that cover all the I was kind of wondering that how you how you came up with the shroud sizes you have so it's you've already worked with them and and know right and it's like you know in this industry you can't go far without good partnerships and working right. together so they've been able to help us really dial in our line to what the most po uh, prevalent stuff is what's popular and really be able to cover almost everything out there on the market. Mm -hmm. I guess for somebody that's on a budget, what are some things maybe for for if you're on a budget what you could do because. I know some people probably might, might not be able to afford the controller. They they do get a little pricey, although they work extremely well. Do you offer some like you know the relays or? We do. So we offer a, a traditional relay kit. You can use a manual switch. Um, we offer 180 and 190 degree thermal switches as well. Okay. And then you can use pretty much any other thermal switch out on the market as well. Plenty of options. Uh, it's any variance of price range. We we even have a few more budget style controllers that are simplified, uh, work similar to a relay where it turns it off or on, mm -hmm. but you can kind of fine tune the temperature as you need. All right, Cam, let's go look at this fan trail we built. Absolutely. All right, Phil, I understand you're the mastermind behind this beautiful shroud that we're looking at. You think yes. you could tell me a little bit of your process? Uh, sure, so uh, after we decided what fans to go with, kind of just roughly put it in, in the area that we needed. I like to think that the parts build themselves. You know, you put things where you want them, and after that, you kind of just fine tune to what you need, but we can throw it on the table and get a closer look. Yeah, I'd love to take a closer look at that. Looks like there's a lot of attention and thought in this piece. Can you tell me how you thought to fabricate it the way that you did? Sure. So. Uh... The main thing is just kind of placement when you when you start to, to build things. So uh, we knew that we wanted an inch of space between the radiator and the fans. So after that was mocked up, I offset it uh, to go around the inlet and outlet of the radiator. So then I started to form the sides. I used a, a radius brake to achieve this, this curve. I just think it looks a lot better in the end than just a hard brake. And it, uh, that extra detail you know, goes a long way. After they were centered and uh, separated to where we needed them and I got my radius break, I actually built this piece longer than it needed to. Uh, just from experience, you know, building uh, larger and cutting down is easier than adding at the end. After initially mounting these fans at the height we wanted, you know, this was all just one piece of aluminum and uh, I went back and I uh, traced where I wanted these cutouts. And then I just went to the, uh, to the Rotex, it's, which is just a, a machine that cuts out uh, different size radiuses of circles. And so I just punched uh, four of these in each cutout, and then I went back and cut it out and ground it all down and made it, made it look nice. Once that was completed, I just I started doing the sides. So, like I said, we offset it, and I started building these sides to go around uh, the radiator. And uh, 
one cool detail is these little these little uh, nipples here at the end. Mm -hmm. And the only reason they're there is to be able to get a bolt through to get on the fan. Otherwise, uh, this side piece would have been hanging off the radiator. So it was kind of just a neat thing that came together. Definitely shows that extra thought and the skill that you have in right. doing something like this. Um, so another cool thing uh, that we did was uh, after capping the sides, you know, this is all one weld here, but uh, we just kind of grind the weld down and tune it in so it looks like a nice one piece. And uh, these cutouts, I kind of wanted to do something different than just cutting one big circle out, you know, because it would have been functional to just do one circle and four mounting holes, but. Like I said, just going that extra mile for that detail, it really, uh, really ties it all together and it's uh, easy on the eyes. Uh, it definitely pops. Yeah, so uh, also too with these brackets, uh, the reason that they're shaped like this and the offset is uh, just placement where we needed it. We wanted to drop it down, you know, uh, lower to the frame rails. So uh, these mounting holes were already there on the truck. So I, I used stock holes that were there and uh, I just made a drop down bracket to place the radiator where we needed it. When designing this shroud, uh, we decided to go ahead and make it out of aluminum, just because it's uh, lightweight, easier to handle, and uh, it's a bit harder to weld at times, but it's easier to grind, and it just looks better in the end. Right. Especially to complement the aluminum radiator. And it really makes it more impressive that there's even a weld right there, because I mean, this right. close, I can't even tell. Right, right, so it's just, it's just attention to detail, and uh, so we kept aluminum throughout with these brackets, and. Uh, the reason these holes are here is uh, just, you know, in the future we we're going to mount a trans cooler and other things, so we might need room to run some lines through. So that's why uh, when building something, you, I kind of want to just uh, keep a mind out for the future and what's, what's going on, what's going to happen, so that way we're not backtracking and having to go back on your work and then... You only do it once. Right, right. As far as wiring goes, you know, they'll get uh, routed together and then they'll come out wherever they need to. Keeps it nice, clean, hidden. And you don't see any of it. Another one of those small touches that adds to the overall build. Yeah, right, right. So after going down the list of the things that we wanted to achieve, uh, you know, we have this shroud in front of us and it, it completes everything that we needed to. And uh, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it houses these fans really nicely. Yeah, you did a great job with it. I think we should uh, put this beauty back where it belongs so it stays nice and safe. Sure. I really am blown away that there's a weld there. I mean, you, you can't tell. Awesome. Cam, thank you for coming and uh, showing us all your products and explaining a little more about it. I'm, I've actually learned quite a few things today and I, I thought I was pretty knowledgeable on, on what you got, but thanks, thanks for coming down. And, and uh, help us out. I appreciate you having us down and it's awesome to see the quality that you're putting our products to and the, the real high-end builds that you have going on. So oh, we're glad to be a part of it. Thank you.